everyone, my name is Katie Robertson and I just want to welcome you to the Anchor at Home. This is our final one for the season and we're so glad you're here. If you're in a watch party with family and friends or you're on your own, we are thrilled you're tuning in. And I also want to welcome you aboard the old passenger ferry boat. It's named the Concordia, built in 1930, and it's moored right here in Gig Harbor, Washington, where the anchor all began. The anchor actually first met in a net shed, a fishing net shed, right around the bay here. So it's pretty cool. We wanted to be in a special place for our last one of the season. And at this time, I always like to share a brief history of how the anchor all began. And it was really after the biggest storm hit my life. And that was shortly after my oldest daughter, Karina, passed away after a five-year battle with leukemia. And during that time, it was um, our faith in the Lord Jesus that held us so strong for myself, my daughter, Karina, and our family. And I just developed this passion to share with everyone how real he is and how he held us so strong. So I gathered some friends here in Gig Harbor together and we started to dream and pray about what that would look like. And we came up with this idea of having a gathering for women of all ages to come together. And our whole mission was to um, encourage each other and help each other to be anchored in faith and friendships. So that is the history of how it all began. We are excited about what has been going on this past year. We are um, tonight excited to share a special presentation at the end of this time together. It will be a little recap review of our Anchor at Home, um, how it's been this year. We'll be hearing from women, how they've been encouraged and see firsthand some watch parties. So we hope you stay tuned. And we are just um, excited about our statistics since this pandemic and gone virtual here on the video we are so thrilled we are up to over 6500 youtube views which amazes me and we have been viewed in all 50 states and this is really cool news we have found out we have been viewed in a couple countries italy and australia that blows me away we are dreaming big. We want to take the anchor everywhere. And we're asking for you all to get on board and help us get the word out there. We would love for you to um, go to our website and subscribe to our um, website so that you could get our weekly, you can get our weekly um, information, encouragement throughout this summer and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd also love it if you could share us and like us on social media. And we'd love if you could share this link, this YouTube link with your friends and family. Think of those 5, 10, 20 people that you could share this with and help get the word out there. So we are dreaming big and we'd love for you to get on board. And also at this time, before we really get going here, we'd like to have our raffle reminder. And we, if you'd like um, to sign up on our website, theanchorgathering.com, you can go there, put your name in, and this is our navy blue signature anchor logo etched glassy baby and it ha comes with the little verse in there we are founded on hebrews 6 19 we have this hope jesus as an anchor for the soul firm and secure so we hope you go sign up and tomorrow morning first thing we'll have the winner out there and with that our hope and prayer for you tonight is that you would be encouraged and anchored in your faith wherever you are on that journey and that you be anchored in friendships. So now, as we always do, is we start with our music and tonight we are thrilled we get to hear from Emily Daniels and she was a guest musician, musician for us a couple months ago and we are so thrilled she can be here again all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. She is um, an up and coming country musician and a singer songwriter and tonight she's going to um, share a very special piece that we asked her to, to sing for us. So we um, are looking forward to hearing from her. A couple fun facts are that she has awesome coaches, her voice coaches. She's had Faith Hill and Carrie Underwood, and she also has 78,000 streams on Spotify. Very impressive. And her signature color, I like to mention, is red. So once again, Emily, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. Thank you. 
Thank you, Emily. That was so great. We just loved hearing the lyrics to that word that is a theme for tonight, how the Lord is our great rescuer. He's rescued the anchor, that we got to go virtual and come into homes, and that we've heard awesome stories of women this past year of how they've cried out to the Lord and He has been their rescuer and helped them. And it's been so awesome to hear. So thanks again. Um, at this time is the time we have what's called the anchor moment. One of my favorite times we get to hear a little bit or we get to hear from someone a little bit about their life and a little bit about their faith journey and a time they've had an anchoring moment or a time their faith's been anchored or they've seen the Lord to be real in their lives working. So tonight we are very privileged to have Kathleen Cummins with us. Kathleen is our chair of the board, our anchor board, and we are so um, excited that she can be here to share with us tonight. She, a few things about Kathleen. She just recently moved to Gig Harbor from Seattle, which is so exciting for me because she is such a good friend and shares the passion for the anchor. She, um, she and her husband have moved here recently and she has two grown daughters and she is a VP in wealth management. She's been helping families all over the Pacific Northwest for many years. And we are so um, glad she can join us tonight. And now let's hear from Kathleen. Katie, thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, there's a, a lot of stories I could tell about Katie. Uh, she has been a force in my life. So exciting. 
Um, so a little bit about me. I grew up in a family that attended Christian Missionary Lions Church in Oregon. And so I had a big fear that God was going to call me to be a missionary. And that's not what I want. I saw myself doing. Um, so I, I went to college. Um, I grew up in this wonderful home and went to college and had um, a wonderful four years, learned so much. But, you know, when I left uh, college, I also left my faith behind. And basically, I think I was a little churched out. We were a family that went Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And had really, I look back, those were wonderful experiences. But there, the world was beckoning, and it seemed like they had all the answers. And I really um, thought that that was true. And so I spent my 20s and 30s very much far away from friends that were Christian and from the church and from the message of the Bible that God loves us and has a great plan. And he's not trying to make you a missionary if you don't want to. He knows your heart and he knows what's really best for you. But um, I ended up having two daughters. My husband and I are very fortunate. We have two girls. Um, and when the oldest was in about third grade, we were visiting another girl that was born the same day in the same hospital, and her mom has the same name, so we have some fun stories about the girls being born um, back in 1993. And they were playing, they were in second or third grade, and um, my friend Kathleen said to her daughter, you need to go get ready for bed. It's time to get cleaned up. We're going to church tomorrow. I need you to take a bath. And my daughter turned around and looked at me and said, Mom, why don't we go to church? <laughs> and I have to say, God used that moment to say, come on back, come on back to the kingdom. So I put my pride aside and said, I think I need to live a little bit differently li my life. I've been trusting in myself and um, that's, that's not really the best, um, that's not really the best way to live. I was on my way to, be, to becoming probably the most selfish person you'd ever met. And so giving that place of my life, um, of me being in the center, putting God in the center, has made all, all, the, all the difference. Um, boy, <clears throat> excuse me. So that is that was the beginning of so many adventures and God just um, being so real in my life, in my husband's life and with our daughters, and with the plans that he had for us. During that time, um, my husband did some interesting things, including working at, with a company that was making comic book Bibles. So I laughed that we ended up being missionaries anyway. God has, I think, a terrific sense of humor. Um, and so let me take you back to March of 2020. Katie and I were on the phone, and Katie and I spend a lot of time on the phone together. <laughs> Either we're in person walking or we're we're on the phone talking about the anchor, talking about getting the good news out about Jesus and how we're not alone in the world and how much he loves us. Um, so I was saying to Katie, I, I think we're going to have to cancel. This was the anchor. At that point, we had 10 in-person anchors. And this was the one in Bellevue that had been standing room only in January. We had over 120 women there, and we knew we were going to have good numbers for March, or so we thought. And then came the news that things were shutting down. And Katie said, we have the singer, we have the speaker, we have the anchor moment. The team has gotten the food, the, the drinks, the flowers, everything's ready. And it was really heartbreaking to say, we have to shut it down. And somehow God took that crushing disappointment and all the energy we thought was wasted and turned it around and created the anchor at home. So we went from the Anchor Gathering, which is our official name, to small anchor gatherings in people's homes and having this amazing rescue that God created. Um, and then we went from having women knowing about the anchor in just a few states. Now we have people watching the anchor from all 50 states and outside the country. So we really want to share the good news about Jesus and in that you don't have to live your life in fear and worry and wondering what's going to happen to you. And that's the amazing rescue story that we're hearing tonight. So thank you so much for this chance to share my rescue story and the Anchor's rescue story. Thanks so much. 
Thank you, Kathleen. It is truly a privilege and honor to have you on our anchor board. And thanks again for sharing your story with us. At this time, I'm really privileged to get to share the final message of our season. And um, I'm going to, I want to just continue on this theme that the Lord is our great rescuer. And um, I'm just going to start with a couple rescue missions I've been a part of in my life that are pretty big and have been kind of terrifying. And one I shared last fall, some of you might remember, but when my husband, Ron, fell overboard from our boat. It was a cold gray morning on Lake Washington, and he slipped on the deck and fell into the waters of Lake Washington, fully clothed with a shoulder bag wrapped around his neck, his shoes and all, and it was terrifying because of the fact that as you looked around Lake Washington near the boat, there were no ladders to climb out on, and there, the dock is so high he could not pull himself up. So, and one other fact, my husband does not swim well. He is kind of a lead weight. So, very scary, but this is when I saw, which was the best timing ever, a life ring, and I grabbed this life ring, and this I hooked onto a pier, over the pier and my husband was able to climb up and out on this life ring, acted like a ladder. So, so thankful for my life ring. That is, whoa, the first huge rescue, well, big rescue that I've been a part of. Now, the second one that is pretty big in my life happened many years ago when my daughter was two. Um, my daughter Annika and we were with some friends at Lake Wa or Lake Chelan at their beautiful home and we were um, out on the pool deck and just imagine this little um, view here my daughter Karina was in little water wings at four years old Annika was in a inner tube little turtle inner tube and my son was only a month and he was in a, in a baby carrier right next to me I was having a little mom time enjoying a moment watching the children when all of a sudden my son started to cry. So of course, as every good mom does, I tended to my son just for a second. And as I turned, I heard a huge commotion and a splash looking over to the far side, our dear friend who had kept his eyes on our children, my daughter, he had jumped in and with one big swoop, he just swooped in and brought Annika up and out. She was dropping through the turtle inner tube and was on her way to a drowning time. So I was honestly so terrified in the minute, but so thankful that he, our friend, had his eyes on her. So just sharing those stories to be a visual, to just set up what that looks like to be rescued up and out. And I want to go to this awesome couple verses that I've just stumbled upon recently in the Old Testament. It's in Exodus chapter 3, just two verses. It says this, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I have heard them crying out because of their slavery, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them and to bring them up and out of that place into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, I guess it was the word rescue that caught my attention, first of all, but I wanted to share just a few things that I think are good or some encouraging um, things that we can take from these, just these two verses. And the first thing is that the Lord sees us. That's the first thing it says. He sees us in our suffering. And that is with such um, great news for me to know. Just like that, our good friend had his eyes on our daughter the Lord has his eyes, his loving eyes on each one of us and sees us no matter where we are in this life. And if we're in that suffering, he knows all the details. He doesn't have that policeman eye on us. He has a loving eye on us. He cares for us. The word it says concerned. I have heard them and I have concern for my people. He loves us and he wants us to come to him. So that first and foremost, he sees us in our suffering. And the word suffering, I think we can all relate to the word suffering to some extent. We've all been through a pandemic, which kind of is unbelievable when we really think about it. But the Lord has seen every detail for each one of us. And now he sees whatever that is that you're going through. If it's an emotional time or suffering, or if it's your circumstances, 
he sees you with any of that anxiety or fear or depression, guilt or shame, or any of your circumstances in their family or marriage or careers or just fears of the, or of the unknown and future, the Lord sees you. And that is a great thing to know. And then next out of this verse is that we can cry out to him. The people in this verse here, they were crying out to the Lord for help. And that is such a great um, promise to know that we can cry out to him. It says in one of my favorite verses, Joel, it's an Old Testament book, Joel chapter 2, verse 32. It says this, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I love this verse. Everyone means everyone. It means any age, any person, no matter what you've done, who you are, what you're going to do, anything about you. Every person can call on the name of the Lord. He is waiting to hear from each one of us. And I love that it says, will. He will save you. He will. It's a promise. It doesn't say, maybe, or if you do this, or if you do that, or if you don't do this. He, it says, the Lord will save you as you cry out to him. And the word save, I love this word. Save means to rescue. It means to deliver from despair, to bring up and out. If you remember anything from today, up and out. That's what the Lord likes to do, is rescue us up and out. And that, I just wanted to share recently, my daughter was in town with me, Annika, and we were having this discussion about how the Lord is our great rescuer. And she reminded me, she said, Mom, do you remember when I was little, when I was scared in the night, and you'd come into my room, and you told me I could call in the name of Jesus? And I, I will have to say, yes, I remember, but that was a long time ago. And she was probably about two or three. And she said, Mom, that helped me so much. And what has she done? Her daughter, our granddaughter, who's almost three, has been having terrible dreams, nightmares, and calling out for her mom and dad frantically. And Annika has gone into her daughter by her bed and said, honey, just you can call in the name of Jesus. And it was so fun to hear that my daughter, by sharing that with her little girl, our granddaughter, it's so cute. Now that my, her, my son-in-law and my daughter can hear her down the hall ca calling out on Jesus, and it must be bringing her peace and comfort because if it wasn't, she would definitely be calling out for her mom and dad. So just to say, everyone, can call on the name of the Lord and he will save. And now another point I wanted to say from this, just these couple verses are to hold on to his promises. This is the best promise. It says, the Lord has come down to rescue them and bring them up and out of that place into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. That is a promise. He's gonna rescue, bring us up and out to that better place, the place of milk and honey. And I thought, milk and honey, what does that mean? Is that, is that good? What is that really all about? And I love Googling things and I Googled flowing with milk and honey and boy, it comes up with some good things. It means from the Bible that the Lord's gonna bring you up and out to a better place, a place full of abundance. That is a great word. Abundance means more than enough. He's going to provide for you and give you what you need more than you could, you know, more than you even know. So by crying out to him, that is a promise. And what's really cool is the Lord rescues us in a few different ways, which I have so experienced in my life. One way is through people. I cannot even begin to say how many awesome people the Lord has I feel like brought as a life ring into my life to help me out of, out of my hard times. People are a huge way that the Lord uh, likes to rescue us. And the second way I think is really amazing is that he rescues us with his word. This Bible, I really wanna just make it very clear. It's like a life ring. The Bible, life ring, same thing. If you read the Bible, it is a life ring. It brings you up and out of your despair. It's just a matter of getting in, this this book it will change your life and the third thing that i find how he rescues us is through circumstances it's just a crazy thing how he ordains and uh, makes things happen and and brings things into our life that you can't even call a coincidence because they're too crazy once you start crying out so that holding on to that promise he's gonna bring you up and out 
And the last thing I want to share about from this verse is, well, actually, yes, goes with this, is that we have to wait and trust in the, the Lord's timing. He knows best. We got to believe that he's got it. Once we cry out to him, he's going to work and he's got the timing. And I want to share just the couple verses from one of my favorite stories that so brings this to life. It is from the New Testament, book of John, chapter 11. It's the Mary and Martha, their sisters. It's the story about them and their brother, Lazarus, who is very, very sick and he's on his deathbed. And this is what is remarkable about this story. It is so, I feel like I have just have a whole new light on this story. It is really amazing how the sisters, what do they do? First thing, they cry out to Jesus, just like we're sharing here. They send a messenger very fast and it's very urgent. It's like, Jesus, you can heal our brother, come quick. That is what the messenger raced to find Jesus to tell him. And then they just left it in his hands. Well. In the meantime, Mary and Martha are with their brother and it is getting kind of nip and tuck. He is very, very sick. Jesus has got word. He totally knows how desperate they are. But what does he do? This is where it's all in the timing, a timing of the Lord. He knows what he's doing. He waits. He doesn't come right away. This has always bothered me. He waits two whole days and he doesn't come right away, even though he knows their desperation. So as the story continues, Mary and Martha, they are now giving up. It's pretty bad. And Lazarus actually does die. It is the saddest story to me because I can so relate to this story. And it's like, Jesus, where are you? You need to be here now. And so what happens is Jesus finally decides time to go. So he waits those two days. He, he heads to the, to the sister's home and it turns out Lazarus has been already dead for four whole days, like way too late. And this is where I feel like it comes alive when you look at this story closely. Mary and Martha and the whole town are grief stricken. They are all crying and sobbing. And I know the feeling of that kind of grief. Their brother, I mean, their dear friend has passed away and they are crying out. And Jesus sees them and he starts to cry with them. And then they start questioning him. And I totally can relate to this. And I'm sure some of you can too. Kind of like, Lord, where have you been? You could have done it. How come you waited? You could have been here and saved Lazarus' life. And Jesus just was patient and knew his timing. Because then what he says to the girls is, Hey, I want to see Lazarus' body. Show me where the body is. So then Martha, this is one of the most... This is a really crazy part of this whole story. Martha says, Lord, are you sure you want to go see the body and open the tomb? It has been four whole days. There is going to be, and this is the words from the Bible, a very bad odor in there. And this is when I just recently, I woke up in the morning on my bed with two words in my mind. And these were the words, it stinks. I'm like, why am I thinking it stinks? This is very weird. I hadn't had a dream or anything. I was just thinking it stinks. And as I kind of had this little aha, you know what? It stinks that we have to wait on God's timing. It doesn't make sense to us. We want him to come boom right now, fix this instant. And we just have a hard time wrestling with, he knows the best timing. And so I wanted to add too. King James version actually says it stinketh. So this whole, it stinks that we have to wait on the timing. But the power of this story that has come to life for me is that Jesus, he could have healed Lazarus being sick and that would have been nice, right? But no, he waited because he wanted to show something more spectacular, what he could really do. And that was he could raise something dead to life. And as the story goes, Jesus comes to the tomb, asks them to roll the this big stone away, and he yells really loud into the tomb, Lazarus, come out. And I thought he might have said, come up and out, because 
Lazarus, can you picture it? He'd have to raise up, this dead man coming to life, raise up and then come walking out. He came out in his grave clothes and Mary and Martha went crazy. I can only imagine the reunion of your lost brother thinking he's gone to coming alive. And I just can only picture it. I, it's so close to my heart what that would be. It would be amazing. So in this story, the power of the message on the timing is the Lord wanted to show what he can do. He can raise something that is dead and hopeless in our lives. And I don't know about you, I've experienced it. And I'm sure there's some of you out there watching right now. You might have something kind of hopeless right now or that's pretty dead, like a situation or your emotions or your uh, relationship or marriage or your finances or your career or whatever you're thinking. It's not going to work. It's hopeless. It's dead. But no, I am here to say Jesus can raise you up and out. He wants us to cry out to him, hold on to his promises, and he will hear you and he wants to help rescue us. And so I just wanted to um, end with my story that is the biggest story of why, I, honestly, I started the anchor. This is my biggest story, how the Lord rescued me. And I am thankful that the timing, how the Lord rescued me was pretty quick. I didn't have to wait too long, but in a very short um, way, I'll just recap it fast. It was a year after my daughter had passed away, Karina, and my husband and I, we volunteered to be the summer staff coordinators at the Young Life Camp, Malibu, up in Canada. And we, it's our family favorite place. And I thought, what a great idea. We get up there, we're in charge of 40 college kids, kind of age 19 to 25. And I thought it was gonna be so great, but oh, no, no, no. It turned out to be so awful for me. Well, so hard in my emotions because every young girl that kind of looked like my daughter in the 19, 20 year old range, that's the age my daughter passed away, I just oh, crumbled. I just was missing her so much and in despair, I just was having a really hard time. So that is when I sat on a rock there looking into the beautiful Princess Louisa Inlet and I cried out, Lord, please show me that I can live. Show me that I can make it because I don't think I can. It was too hard to even imagine my life without my daughter. So hard. So there was the cry out. Then all of a sudden, I would never expect this this fast. The very next morning, my daughter, Annika, who was helping at the camp too, she came running to find me because she had some amazing news. She came to me and said, Mom, there is a picture of Karina in the ice cream shop. And I'm like, what? And I was totally confused. She pulls me in there and we look, and it's gonna be on your screen. I have my little picture here. We look at this picture and she shows me, Mom, look at, it's a picture of two girls walking out to the outer dock at the camp. She goes, Mom, that girl on the right is Karina. Those are her pink shorts. That's her short ponytail. And I'm looking at it going, very skeptical. No way, that couldn't be. She goes, mom, those are her elbows. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. That is a picture of Karina. Now you might go, well, what's, so, what's the big deal here? But just so you know, at this Camp Malibu, there's probably two pictures in the entire camp that are framed. So it's very odd that the one picture is a picture of our daughter and I've just cried out. We went to the camp manager to find out the story and he goes on to tell us some quite remarkable information. He said, for one, they've always wondered who those girls were and two, they had hired the photographer a few years back from Gig Harbor, Washington, my town. And it turns out we know who she is and she's married to one of the oncology doctors that walked the journey with us. It was getting too crazy, way more than a coincidence here. And we met with our friend, the photographer, and she went on to share with us how she had hid in the bushes here on this, this trail at camp and waited to just the right shot she wanted. She'd never met our daughter. She didn't know. She said that lots of kids passed, took the shot, and then the fact that Malibu, the camp, out of thousands of photos that she'd taken for promotional and other things that they chose this picture of Karina. And the crazy thing is too, 
a 350 campers come every single week to this camp. The likelihood of the one picture is my daughter, who I'm crying out to and missing so much, is was one of those, honestly, a rescue mission to little old Katie here. I knew that the Lord had not forgotten me, that he was doing something, and I was going to trust him because that just would not happen. So that was one of the huge stories that I was so touched how God showed his love on me and that he wouldn't forget me, that I wanted to make sure everyone knows I'm no one special. He wants to do that for every single one of us, rescue us in whatever place that is we're in that we're having a hard time or suffering. And the second little, I'm going to end on this. I know too many stories, but the other big reason I wanted to start this anchor and share the good news is that not only do we get to have the Lord as our anchor and rescuer for this stormy world, that we get to have the hope and promise that we get to be with him forever. And that is what our anchor is founded on. Hebrews 6.19, we have this hope, Jesus as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. That means for today and forever. And I had a dream that I will never forget that I know is so real and a picture of what eternity will be like. I um, it was shortly after our daughter passed away and I had this dream that we were in, that Karina, we were in heaven. And my husband was standing kind of in the corner watching me from the side, very content. And it was this moment that I got to come and reunite with Karina. And I cannot even tell you how special of a dream it was. Karina was in a white gown and a green sash, kind of forest green that matched her eyes and her brown, beautiful hair. And she ran to me and we embraced and hugged each other so, so tight. I went crazy. I kind of was thinking probably like a Mary and Martha story. I went absolutely crazy hugging her. And if I really let myself think about it, it's, it's a kind of hard, but it's a happy thinking. I could just could not believe I was with her. And it was this beautiful lodge. It was like a Northwest contemporary lodge, fur beams, vaulted ceilings, just beautiful. Here we were hugging. And then she pulled back. She looked at me and she goes, mom, I've got so much to show you. And then I woke up and I thought, oh, I wanted to keep going. What was she going to show me? This was a little, I think, foretaste of heaven. And that is the ultimate rescue that we have with the Lord. He, God Almighty loves us so much. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for us, that we if we forgive us. And when we believe in him, we can have that personal relationship. We can know him strong as our anchor here in this stormy world and forever. So that is why I really wanted to share these stories, that they were behind a passion that I have developed that I wanted to share through the anchor. So thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of it this year on our anchor at home. And at this time, I am really excited that we get to see a little special presentation of a look back on our year and review of some of our watch parties and hear from some women how the anchor at home has encouraged them. So let's enjoy. It's the first anchor gathering. Our host Anna and her friend Aniko are here now. When I got an invitation to go to an anchor gathering in someone's home, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. And so I went and um, sat through it with some amazing women and just cherished the experience to have time and space to process um, what these amazing women were saying, their faith stories, their God stories on camera, but then to come together as a small group in a home and just talk about how encouraged we are by the stories, by the music, and how inspired we are in our own faith, and just to have space to do that during a time when, you know, there weren't a lot of shared experiences happening anywhere. The anchor uh, moments, I think, for all of us that, that got together for that, it was a breath of fresh air of, of God-inspired stories that are real. What's been very encouraging um, the most about the anchor at home are the stories of God's love and hope. I do 
feel that the Lord gave this to us as a special gift, especially during these crazy times that we've just lived of a worldwide shutdown. So for me personally, I felt very blessed that I was able to attend a watch party live at my friend Mary's house. It was so wonderful to be able to watch these anchor moments and to hear real stories from women who went through deep, dark struggles and how the Lord was there for them. And so it was special to be able to watch the videos and then afterwards be able to talk together to either relate to the stories or just always feeling encouraged in our own walks with the Lord. I love to hear other women's testimonies about how God has been an anchor to their soul in difficult times. I was also able to partake of the anchor and to share it with others across the country that I would have loved to invite to an anchor here at our home, but they don't live in Seattle. So I just feel, as God always does, He takes something and, and makes it even better. And He grew the anchor in so many ways and this year that we could have never imagined. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, and through the Anchor at Home, uh, where we've been able to gather at uh, uh, homes and have a smaller group setting, I've really been able to uh, share and connect with other women um, on, a, on a much deeper level and have been super um, excited uh, and, and uh, grateful for, for this time. It is always so inspiring and um, actually it's a divine quality of words that are spoken by these women as they share their journey and how God has intervened in their lives. Our desire in Snohomish is for women to be encouraged with the hope of knowing Jesus as our anchor and to live life to the fullest. To hear this lady speak who was very transparent and very honest about her own life and experiences. I, after the meeting, we had a great time of fellowship and um, deep and intimate conversations. And we could share our testimonies, how the Lord Jesus helped us through rough times and um, it was very uplifting and I was very, very um, happy that I attended and I went. And I got introduced to Anchor with my grandma, Marilyn Smith, and it's been great over quarantine going to her house and hanging out with family and loved ones. And my favorite part about Anchor is just how I've grown in my faith since. Uh, for me in 2021, it was a year of incredible uncertainty and unknowns that I had not experienced before. And I felt so grateful for my Anchor at Home group um, as they provided this landing place to be reminded of Jesus' hope, um, his faithfulness, and a reassurance, uh, a place to go back to and a landing place. Think of the Anchor, it's, it's connection. Mm -hmm. Connection with, with women, with God, in new ways. The, the two words I would use the most are how inspired I was and how much I admired these women. Working from home and during COVID, it's been really hard to not be around a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And especially um, women that I knew that I would be able to be more transparent with and um, just enjoy the presence of the world. There's just been so much going on this year. I think um, just allowing women to have a platform to share stories is something that just creates so much peace and hope and um, just I think the vulnerability of storytelling is really encouraging and just really healing for um, this time that we're in in our world and I'm just so grateful to everybody who shared musicians and all of our gals who shared their stories um, thank you so much no matter where you are on your spiritual journey there is something in it for everyone and I would just like to say thank you, Katie, for being obedient to God and for giving us all an opportunity to be part of this because it is powerful, it is meaningful, and it has impacted my life. I'm looking forward to our next Anchor meeting. I'm just so thankful for the Anchor at home and thanking the Lord for it. Wow, that was so fun to see our year in review. Kathleen, what did you think? 
it's amazing. I can't believe that this year happened and it all came together in such an incredible way. Very fun. So glad that we could be here together to watch it and be here. <laughs> so true. And we're just reaching out to you and saying, we want to keep this going. We want the anchor to go everywhere. But we are going to need some money to do that. So if you're interested in adding uh, your funds to our ministry, you can go to our website and there's a donation um, button that you can push. And we'd be so grateful. It's a tax deduct deductible donation that you can do. We can't believe what God's done with the disappointment and the closing of the Anchor Gatherings and the rebirth of the Anchor at Home. So it's pretty incredible. It is. Wow. Thank you so much. And we so just want to thank you all again for tuning in this past year. And we just wish you a great summer. We'll keep you informed over the um, summer on the up and coming Anchor at Home when it starts. And we'll be starting some anchors in person. So, so fun. So until next time, stay anchored and we will see you soon.